Hello everyone. Have you or a loved one been diagnosed with breast cancer? Have you lost a loved one as a result of that fatal disease? If the answer is yes, then it is essential to know everything about breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most frequent diagnosed life-threatening cancer in women and the leading cause of cancer death among women, affecting one in eight women during their lifetime. As you can see, because this cancer is so frequent in women, it is the leading cause of mortality each woman should be aware of everything about this disease in order to prevent it from occurring. You'd probably grab your laptop and start exploring the internet for answers to know everything about your disease. However, as we all know, Google is not medically qualified to provide you with information regarding your case and stage. After all, Google is not a medical professional. These films will teach you more about breast cancer such as risk factors, early detection, and treatment choices. You will also be prepared to change your lifestyle in order to avoid acquiring this disease. And if it does occur, you'll be able to deal with it and beat the cancer. Our role today is to answer most of your questions regarding breast cancer. Today we have Dr. Lee who is leading Dr. Abuchan St. Mary's Hospital. He's going to discuss with us everything about breast cancer from an experienced medical point of view. Hi, I'm Uma. Before we start, please subscribe to our channel so the next time you'll be updated with our new releases. Hello, Dr. Lee. Hello. Can you please introduce yourself to our viewers? I am Lee Wan Ho, who works at the Catholic University Hospital, specializing in treating breast cancer. So, Dr. Lee, first question, what is breast cancer exactly? Breast cancer is one of the most common forms of cancer for women. It appears as tumors and is increasingly steadily in occurrence. But breast cancer is possible to detect early on with medical tools and exams. If detected early, it can be treated successfully quite often. If the cancer is not spread to other organs, the cure rate is 90% or so. So what is exactly the etiology behind the breast cancer? It is not clear yet the causes behind breast cancer. So we do not yet know what type of person contracts it and why some don't. But when we compare those who have had it to those who do not, we can come up with some traits common to those who have had it particularly exposure to female hormones, alcohol, and radiation, as well as ovarian cancer in family history. Female estrogen hormones tend to encourage breast cancer. So, females who have begun menstruation early, or have had menopause later, also those who have not been pregnant or breastfed are more prone to developing breast cancer. Also, we know that about 5% are genetically prone. While there are many markers that can play a role, and particularly BRCA1 and BRCA2 play a role in cancers. Uh, what are usually the symptoms of breast cancer? In terms of symptoms, about 70% of patients can feel it through lumps. When lumps are detected, one should pay attention to it. Also, about 2% can be detected through blood distribution, especially when lactation is present without any suction. But if it happens, a doctor should take a look. However, the most common symptoms patients visit the hospital is pain. Pain is a separate issue from breast cancer. So suspecting breast cancer due to pain is not needed. But if it worries someone, a medical exam or test can resolve the patient's worries. So what are the methods for diagnosis? The best way to cure breast cancer is to detect it early and administer treatments early. Breast cancer is easy to detect. The basic method is to do self-exams. Every month, five days before menstruation or five days after, when the bloat subsides, a self-exam is helpful. Otherwise, one can find out with the help of a medical expert. Also, it can be detected with the help of imaging specialists using ultrasound or mammogram. We can also detect through biopsies. For Asian women, ultrasound is very useful. For Western women, it is known that mammograms are the standard. For Asian women who have densely woven tissue, a mammogram can miss 30 to 40% of the potential tumors. 
So for younger women, incorporating ultrasound for detection is beneficial. Ultrasound cannot replace mammograms. One can say that mammograms can see the forest and ultrasounds can see the trees. Using just one of the two can miss very early tumors of very small size. What are the different types of breast cancer? Breast cancer, first of all, some are ductal carcinoma in situ, and some are invasive ductal carcinoma. And depending on the location, it can be divided into ductal and lobular carcinomas. But recently, molecular biology matters most. So, the cancer can be typed as hormone, HER2 or triple negative types. The reason this matters is because a patient's outcomes change as well as the treatments. What are the kind of treatments that exist for breast cancer dependent on the kind of breast cancer? The basics of treating breast cancer is total surgical removal of the tumors. If visually possible, the surgical removal is the best. Aside from surgery, there are effective supplemental treatments such as hormone therapy, radiation therapy, and chemotherapy, etc. The supplemental treatments depending on the tumor types and development. If we discuss surgical methods first, there are partial and fully removable surgeries. If the tumor is small and we can preserve the shape of the breast, we can go with the partial surgery. But if the tumors are widespread or the tumor is large and there is no way the shape of the breast can be preserved, we can go with the full removal surgery. While in the past, the result was a flat chest like a man's, now we have cosmetic options using prosthetic materials to preserve the shape of the women's breasts. If tumors are spared to the lymph nodes in the breast area, we remove them. If partially affected, we only remove the affected areas. The reason we do that is because spread to lymph nodes is a common side effect. If that happens, it is not curable. That is why if we detect it, it has to be removed as it can negatively affect our movement and cause pain. Second, there is chemotherapy to be discussed. Because we use the size of the tumor or spread to the lymph nodes to decide to perform chemotherapy or not. About 80% of patients undergo chemotherapy. Lately, with more accurate diagnosis, there are cases where chemotherapy is used even in small tumors and skipping chemotherapy even when the lymph nodes are affected. Also, chemotherapy can affect pregnancy. So we must consider that prior to administering chemotherapy. So in order to individually tailor the treatment, we use what is termed these days as precision medicine. Many patients ask if they can forego chemotherapy if the breasts are fully removed. In reality, those are separate issues because the cancer can reoccur even with full removal. The chemotherapy's main goal is to attack the cancer cells traveling the bloodstream and other tissue. So removing the entire breast does not preclude the need for chemotherapy. Another important treatment is radiation therapy which is used by most patients who have undergone partial removal surgery. It takes about five to six weeks of treatment. But lately, there are methods that can reduce the treatment to three to four weeks, which is becoming normal. Also, patients who have undergone full breast removal may also need radiation treatment. Also, those who have been affected by hormones, we treat them with hormonal therapies. The treatment varies whether the patient is pre-menopause or post-menopause. Because this is hormonal, one can experience hot flashes or sleepiness. Usually this is administered for 5 years, but lately there are studies recommending 10 years. We do it for 10 years. 
So what age is a woman more susceptible to breast cancer? Typically, breast cancer occurrence goes up as one ages. In the West, most are centered around the age of 70. In Asia, we see occurrences from age 40 to 50. The reasons are not known yet. So beginning at the age of 40, one must pay attention to the possibility of breast cancer. So talking about the mammary glands, is there any predisposition of, to the disease? Of the total breast cancers, 10 to 20 percent is known to be genetically predisposed. So if family members have breast cancer or ovarian cancer, the likelihood of getting breast cancer goes up. Also, pancreatic cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer have correlation to breast cancers. The remaining 80 percent are cancers without genetic predisposition. We believe the contributing factors are obesity and alcohol consumption. Mm, okay. So, hereditary anomaly of genes BRCA1 and BRCA2, what is it exactly? Heredity breast cancer refers to certain genetic factors that spur the growth of cancer. There are about a hundred types of genes that can have relations to breast cancer. But the most well known are the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. These genes play a role in recovery and of certain cells in the body when damage is present. When the role is limited, the cancer grows. While slight differences between BRCA1 and BRCA2 exist, when there are problems, about 60% can develop breast cancer and 20 to 40% can develop ovarian cancer. So patients need special care and monitoring. While we can perform prevention breast removal, there is no proof that anyone undergoing this procedure will live longer. The reason is because we can detect breast cancer early on, so there is no need to remove the breasts in a preventive manner. So we must discuss deeply with the patient to see if her psychological and environmental needs require this procedure and a preventive measure or not. However, ovarian cancer is hard to detect early on. As once discovered, it is often the later stages. So in this case, preventive removal is needed. The timing should be after having births of babies, ages 35 to 40 or later. Also, those with the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes should get regular checkups from age 25 and up. So for a patient who is fully treated after breast cancer, does he have to take special care afterwards? Many patients search the internet to see what is good to consume and what not to consume, as they are very curious. But there are no really good foods for you, nor really bad foods. A while back, many thought that soybeans were bad for breast cancer due to its isoflavins, which are similar to the chemical structure of estrogen. But recent studies show the opposite effect, and are good for prevention, instead. So it is unclear. So it is not unnecessary to limit the consumption of soybeans or tofu. But a person who has had breast cancer has a higher likelihood of getting it again than those who have never had it. So it is important to have a healthy lifestyle including eating well and exercising regularly. Okay. So can a woman have a healthy ch child after having breast cancer? No problem. This is a very difficult question. A patient with breast cancer who gets pregnant is not at a risk of reoccurrence. But realistically speaking, a woman undergoing hormone treatment for five years or more, the medicine used increases the risk of the child becoming deformed. If a woman wants to have a child while undergoing treatment, we must stop the treatment. But doing so can increase the risk of reoccurrence of cancer. So we must discuss in detail with the patient. If we assume a patient is 35 and wants to have a baby, it is not realistic to think she can have a baby in her 40s when the treatment is over with. So we must discuss her specific case with the perspective of the severity of the cancer, her wishes to have a child, etc. So many doctors would advise on two years of hormonal treatment then get pregnant, then continue after the birth of the baby. Another issue is the likelihood of getting pregnant. When chemotherapy is performed, the ovarian cells get attacked. 
so the likelihood of getting pregnant becomes lower. So before the treatment, a patient can preserve her ovaries or try to use treatments that can limit the damage done to the ovaries. Okay, so breast cancer in men, is it possible? It's very rare, but it can happen. But if it happens, it is usually a benign tumor. So if there is a genetic predisposition, is of old age or if the tumor is not hard, it should not be of high concern. But for men, since it is so rare, even if a tumor develops, many men ignore its consequences and delay diagnosis. So while rare, if it occurs, it is important to get a professional diagnosis. There's no prevention measure, but since obesity and alcohol are related, it is important to watch one's weight and limit drinking alcohol in large amounts. Self-exams, medical exams are both important as preventive measures. People with BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes should get regular checkups at age 25. Others should self-test at age 35 and from age 40 visit the doctor's office for exams, including imaging tests in order to detect any breast cancers early. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Lee, for coming. <laughs> so today we learned many things about breast cancer in detail, such as symptoms and treatment. Thank you for joining us once again today at Cloud Hospital TV. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we'll respond to you as soon as possible.